Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Recitation Zero series of Introduction to Deep Learning. These are essentially a set of videos that will help you tackle your homework part one and part two more efficiently. So it will cover a broad range of topics. And the first one focuses on Python fundamentals. So Python is essentially a high level programming language that has been made very easy to read. It's very widely used in deep learning, data science, and analytics. And while there are other programming languages that do this too, this course will primarily focus on Python because this is what is most commonly used in the real world. So let's look at different concepts, starting with data types. Python supports different data types, like numeric data types to represent whole numbers and decimal numbers. You have string types to represent either a character or a sequence of characters. You can declare them using double quotes, single quotes. The strings can have special characters, spaces, and so on. If you want to represent a true or a false value, you can use the Boolean type. And if you want to uh, represent the absence of a value, you can use the word none. And later, you can use this particular variable and append to it or add more elements, which you'll see in your homework subsequently. There are other data types that Python supports, which are tuple, lists, sets, and dictionaries. All of these represent a collection of elements, but what really separates them is either the operations that you perform on them or how they store data. Tuple represents a collection of elements which are ordered, but they are immutable. So once you have a tuple, you cannot add to it or you cannot delete any element. List, on the other hand, also represents an ordered collection of elements, but it is mutable. So you can add an element or you can delete an element or move around the order once the list has been created. Coming to a set, it represents an unordered collection of elements, but only holds unique values. So if you declare a set with duplicate elements, it will condense all of them to only have unique values, and these don't have any particular order. A dictionary, on the other hand, represents a collection of key value pairs. So in the example given, whatever you see on the left in green is called a key, and whatever you see on the right in red is called a value. So whenever you want to uh, store some sort of association between variables, you can use a dictionary. Coming to logical statements and loops. So a logical statement is the if and else statement where based on a particular condition, uh, the program will execute the appropriate block of code. And in order to write these conditions, you use logical operators like and, or, and not, which is why this is called a logical conditional statement. Coming to loops, if you have a block of code that you want to repeatedly execute, instead of writing them again and again, using a loop makes it more efficient. So if you want to iterate over a sequence like list, tuple, or string, you can use a for loop. In this example, we are iterating over a list. You can also iterate over a function like range, where if you say for a in range of 10 and print a, it would print numbers from 0 to 9. So if you want to execute a particular block of code, say 10 times, you can use a for loop. But on the other hand, in case of while loop, if you don't know how many times you want to execute a particular uh, block of code, you can use the while loop, which will execute the code until a particular condition is satisfied. So to give an example, if you want to train your model for 10 epochs, you can use the for loop. But if you want to train a model until the accuracy is 95%, then you can use the while loop because you don't know how many epochs it would take for it to converge to 95%. Let's now look at functions. Python supports both built-in functions and user-defined functions. We've already seen some functions like print and range previously. Uh, there are other functions like min, max, len, and so on, uh, which are very clearly explained in the documentation. So I highly recommend going through this. You also have uh, very specific functions uh, which are specific for different data types like string, list, and dictionary. So uh, when you go through the documentation, you will understand in more detail how to append it, how to uh, delete elements from it, how to sort them, and so on. Coming to user-defined function, if you want a particular block of code to perform some function that you want, which the built-in functions do not support, then you can use the def keyword followed by the function name and write any block of code that you desire. An example here is about how you can use the if and else statement and put it inside a function so that when you call it, it would perform and run that particular piece of code. 
Next, coming to recursion. This is an example of a user-defined function where a function calls itself until it solves a particular problem. So every recursion will have two cases. One is the base case, which defines when the function call will stop, and the recursive case, which is uh, called every other time. So if you take the example of a Fibonacci sequence, it is basically a sequence where a number is the sum of the previous two numbers. So in this case, the recursive case will be the sum of n minus 1 and n minus 2. And this will keep happening until we reach 0 and 1. And in case we reach 0, we return 0. In case we reach 1, it returns 1. So those would be the cases which define when the recursion finally stops and returns back to the function call itself. Coming to exceptions and error handling. So whenever you uh, write your homework part ones and part twos, you will come across a lot of errors. And looking at the type of error will give you more insight as to where something is going wrong so that you can go and debug it in uh, a more efficient way. So you can have syntax errors, indentation errors, name errors where the function or variable is not defined, or you can have type errors where you're performing some operation on data types that are not compatible with each other. Some more error types are index errors, where you attempt to access uh, some element that is out of range in a particular collection of elements. You can have key errors while accessing dictionary keys. You can have the zero division error or not implemented error. So uh, an example of where you will see these errors are, let's take an example of your homework part twos where you're trying to uh, access in your data some slice of data where the index is going out of bounds. So there you might see an index error and you know that this is uh, something wrong in the data set class and you can go and debug it very easily. In other cases, for example, in your part ones, you'll have multiple different files that you will have to fill. In which case, if you get a not implemented error, you can easily see that um, you have missed out on implementing a particular block and it has nothing to do with the actual logic of whatever you have already implemented. So in this way, you can look at each of these errors and find out uh, what could mostly be the problem with your code. But in case uh, it gives a very vague error, then you can look at the recitation debugging to understand how you can uh, dive in more depth and try to debug these in more detail. This finishes uh, the recitation for Python fundamentals. Uh, we will also be attaching a notebook along with this video where all of these examples that we just went through will be present. So you can run them, change their values, play around, and try to understand these in more details. Thank you.